for today, I'm going to take you on a journey. A journey of how I translated uh, the designer into a design. So, uh, so, so, yeah, so today I'll be taking you on a journey of how I transition from a designer into a design. So, uh, this talk is about incorporating generative AI into my product asset management to bring down the code. So, just like any other traditional dedicated UX designer, I'm also passionate about designing user centric experiences, bringing down cognitive load, and you know, delivering some great products. I've been through a lot of strategies, a lot of bugs, applied all of that vocational knowledge to the data. But then, there was one question that we always had. Am I doing it right? You see that uncertainty always existed. I was hearing AI this, AI that, AI was everywhere. So I thought, why not make use of AI? Why not take AI's help into the server? So that's when I discovered the AI revolution. The AI revolution was here. Well, quite frankly, it's not new. AI is not new, it's been with us for a while now. But then generative AI in specific is something that is different right now. A lot of companies are making a run for it. But we as a designer, like you know, have been using generative AI tools in our design work, design process to make things easy for us. Maybe for you know, writing user stories, user personas, information architecture, sitemaps, you know, you do it. But then have you thought about are we making the user's life easy? How do we ensure that the user experiences the AI? How, how can we benefit out of it? How can the user benefit out of it? That would be thinking, you know, I found that interesting. So that is when I decided to incorporate Gen AI in my application. But, but before that, I wanted to you know one single question and I asked myself, and I want everyone to ask themselves, what value does AI bring into your product? Maybe save money for your users, or maybe reduce cognitive load for them, or improve efficiency, or maybe some other value that you find fascinating. But be very clear about your goal. Because this can make or break your design for your product. Alright. Now, then heading into the implementation. Generative AI in asset management. I have three simple steps. I listed down all the primary workflows from my product. Asset maintenance tasks, health monitoring, inventory management, no cost ownership, and more. Because I wanted to perform or because I wanted to perform or you know, bring down the cognitive load, I performed the cognitive load analysis. I identified the areas where there was complex decision making, data interpretation, manual tasks, and information overload. So by this time, I was clear, you see, the, I identified the areas where generative AI could sit in. So this can actually help in improving the product. Let me give you an example. I'm taking asset maintenance as one. So asset maintenance, you, the user or the asset manager usually maintains the process of inspecting servicing, repairing of the company assets for their longevity, save time, save cost, all of that. How is it traditionally done? The user must check through the equipment's equipment conditions and all of this data from the dashboards, record pages, and all of the data around. And then they also have to analyze historical data, maybe data, you know, taking back from years ago. We're talking about hundreds and thousands of records. Just imagine the mental effort the user has to go through. So how can AI actually you know, play a role in this? Is by analyzing the equipment data. Now, we can predict the maintenance needs, and these are predictions for expert time. It generates optimized maintenance schedules. So, imagine you have a lot of maintenance schedules. How do you know something is effective and efficient amongst them? Genea can do a better job with that, and it can avoid or, you know, do the room for human errors for them. Okay, so settling back, okay, settling back on how Genea has actually got down the cognitive mm -hmm. load. By for analyzing the equipment data, we have brought down the cognitive load by making the data interpretation very easy. For predicting maintenance needs, we improve the efficiency by cutting down the manual task efforts. For generating optimized maintenance schedules, we again go down the cognitive load by making the decision making easy for the user. I'm sure you might be curious to look at the screens of asset management where generative AI is applied. But then this will be a bummer. Sorry to disappoint you, I won't be able to show those screens for potentiality issues. But then let me give you one better. I got some generative AI implementation tips. These are the tips that have worked for me. Tip one, don't force AI onto your users. You see, provide them an option, a flexibility. Maybe by using assistive functional element, an element that can stand out on the screen and can be accessible and recognizable by the user whenever necessary. May that be, uh, you know, in the time the user feels helpless, they might trigger that button to, you know, use generative AI as a help or for assisting. Next is 
GPT chatbots. The most common way of interacting with AI is the system, GPT chatbot. Uh, a lot of companies and you know products are already using this, but how do you make it more effective? You see, by providing some question suggestions. Do we just give out a blank space so we basic next box over with the button? But then you know, analyze the user behavior, let the generative AI study the user patterns, and maybe give them some kind of generative questions that can help out the user in you know asking the you know, questions which are much more effective and they can receive the generations in a more effective manner. Tip three, user control and freedom. Once there is a generation happening, and once you have the answer generated, provide the option for the user to implement it, maybe the generator, and in fact, even report it once you know, implemented. That way, the user will be in control and they will want to, they will have the flexibility and they will feel in control. They feel good about it. But quite frankly, all of this can happen with an it's definitely no dismal signal. As in, you know, there are always challenges around. Always need to look out for bias. So what's bias? AI runs on algorithms and a lot of data. You see, this data brings up the generations of AI. So, you know, there are fair enough chances for, for you to see data that is biased. So be sure about it. Let the users know about it. Use it in you know, aware about it. Transparency. So when we are showing our visuals and generations, to allow the time period, we guess it's something that's limited. For example, ChatGPT does a great job pointing out that its database is limited to 2021. You can do the same for user. How can we help? Explainability. The user shouldn't blindly follow what AI generates. You know, they have to understand, they have to uh, you know, understand the context of why certain generation is happening. So let me give you an example. Maybe the user has asked for a content summarization from a page. And that page might have many different sections. So calling that out, maybe in a sectionized manner. You know, explains it better and makes it so more comfortable in understanding what the civilization is. Lastly, ethical implications. When we talk about data, there's always sensitive data. Maybe, you know, uh, there are data like, like, you know, financial information, usernames, passwords. But these are the kind of screens where you want to keep the confidentiality. You don't want the AI to read over it. So, be sure to draw boundaries. Ensure that you have clear call out of what AI should be and what AI should be. With that said, I'd like to conclude my talk by commenting the use of generative AI in your applications and you know, bring down the cognitive load with some great user experiences. In fact, we have service now for the examples from Austria. So I hope the conventional methods may also harness the power of AI to deliver great products to our value partners. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to read the talk and thank you very much for being a great audience. I hope this talk has been insightful and was able to fuel some ideas for you generative AI in your applications. Thank you very much. Any questions of the station? Thanks.